Hi guys, this is Tejas. This is my new series, Think Serverless. And the entire goal of the series is that we push ourselves to think about a new way of designing systems that is reducing the dependency on servers and try to leverage the services offered by cloud providers. So the problem for the day is event-based image processor. Let's jump into the problem statement. We have to create a service that can process images or any media file that we have in real time. Uh, the system must be highly available with minimal code and we have to save some bucks while making it. So for this video, we'll take a example of a thumbnail generator or an image compressor. So what we have to do is we'll be given a image of larger size and we have to compress the image to form a smaller image so that we can uh, render it quickly basically it's used whenever we share any meme on whatsapp or we upload a new profile picture on whatsapp the images are compressed also the very video that you are watching is also being compressed and that's the system that we want to design today so let's look at a way of designing this system in slightly more traditional way so we have an image and we have a server definitely so the image will be uploaded to the server the server will have a code running on it which will be responsible for compressing the image and after the image is compressed we'll upload the original image to a blob store and the compressed image to another blob store for this example of course there are many drawbacks in this system that's why we are making this video and let's look at them first of all there is managed servers in this case the server can go down there needs to be os updates or other things so we need to manage the server the most important thing is 24-7 server cost. The server is definitely going to be running 24-7 because we don't know when the user might upload the image. So that's why we need to bear the server cost 24-7. Single point of failure, of course. Not scalable. Definitely this system is not scalable. We have to think about becoming Instagram one day and we have to add a lot more servers in that case. Handling errors. Handling errors is again we need to manually handle the errors if the image compression fails then we need to handle the retries and all those things. And the most important thing is self-managed database. In this case, we are using blob store, which is definitely made by you and managed by you, which is not the ideal case scenario. Also, this uh, image store is not distributed and which is like a huge deal because if it goes down or something happens, we have no backup and we need to care about those things on our own. So what I'm going to do here is we'll take the last point self-managed database and work on that so we'll replace the blob store and let aws manage it for us we'll use aws s3 so s3 is a blob store that is provided uh, by aws and which is like good so why we use aws s3 let's look into this as i mentioned aws s3 is an object store and it's of course managed by aws so we don't need to worry about that it's scalable event driven which is like the most important thing that we are going to learn in this video it's a distributed st uh, storage so our data that we have will be stored across multiple regions across multiple availability zones so we don't need to worry about losing our data it's 100 percent uptime and definitely more secure than what we can achieve and we have many other features like we can run big data analytics and it's cost effective. So let's look into a slightly more modern way of designing the system, our image processor. So as you can see, we have eliminated the server and its dependency. So the image is directly uploaded to S3. And what S3 does is, as I mentioned, it's event based. So it will trigger an event. This is our event. And what this event does is it will trigger a Lambda function. Lambda is function as a service from AWS, which will be responsible for compressing our image. We'll have a demo code running on Lambda, which will compress our image. And once we have a, the compressed image, it will upload it to another S3 bucket. As you can see, the event triggers the Lambda. And what this event is, it's a very lightweight event. So the event contains the bucket name uh, where the actual image was uploaded and the object ID and object URL. So what this event tells Lambda is, hey, uh, image is uploaded into S3 in this particular bucket and this is the object URL and object ID. So what Lambda does is it picks up the image, the original image from S3, compresses it and stores the new image into a different S3 bucket. So let's jump right into the demo. So as you can see, I have two uh, buckets made. 
high res image 1 2 3 2 2 and 1 2 3 2 2 2 resize this is because bucket names are unique in AWS this is our original bucket and this is the resize bucket we'll store the images into so let's quickly create a lambda function So now what we'll do is we have a snippet of code that will do our job for us. As you can see, we just import S3 and once the Lambda is triggered, what we do is we try to get the image from S3, the original image that we have. Then we try to resize the image as seen here. And then we put the compressed image into the new S3 bucket. So let's just quickly upload this code into our Lambda. So the code is uploaded. Now let's give Lambda the permission to take objects from S3. Now our Lambda has permission to access objects from S3. Now all we have to do is attach this Lambda to our source bucket. Let's do that. This is our source bucket, which is the bucket in which we'll upload the original images. Let's add event. So we'll trigger this event when there is an create object event. And we'll send this event to Lambda to our image compressor. So as we can see, there is one active notification. Now let's go ahead and upload an image to this bucket. Let's check our resize bucket. As you can see, we have a resized image in this bucket. So the original image that we uploaded was of 446 kilobytes and the new image is of 8.6 KB. If you want to see the image itself, we can see the image. This is the original image. As you can see, it's pretty large. The compressed image is much smaller. So this was our demo. So let's jump into the concept of the video. So the entire concept of the video was how S3 can generate events and trigger other services is what we saw. These are the services that can be integrated with the S3 events currently, which is SQS, Lambda and SNS. In the current example, we saw how we integrated our image processor with Lambda to generate the thumbnails. Same can be done using SQS if suppose if we have a video that is getting uploaded and we need to generate a thumbnail for it, the processing won't be as easy as the code that you just saw. It will definitely take some time. That's why we put videos in SQS and then process it one by one. And another example I can think about SNS is if a friend of yours uploads an image, you get a notification from SNS that, hey, this guy has uploaded the image. So that's the main thing. So what this event is, this can be any event which is can be a put object, delete object, restore object, replication field or many such other things that are being done in S3. So this is the entire concept of the video that we can generate events from S3 and integrate it with AWS services, which will definitely make us move closer to the serverless path. Let's talk about costing. As you can see, the costing is really low. This is for AWS, so the S3 cost is 50 TB per month. It's as low as 0.023 per GB dollars. 
and for AWS Lambda it's really cheap as you can see it's 0.6 dollars per million request and thus we have saved some bucks for our system instead of keeping the server on 24 7 which will definitely cost more and now let's look at the comparison between servers and our serverless design servers is definitely request based system as we saw we need to keep the servers up 24 7 so requests can come anytime and trigger the code in serverless it's event trigger design so as we can see whenever we upload the image to s3 at that time the event is triggered and our lambda wakes up and processes the image so we don't need to pay for time where image is not getting uploaded which brings us to our second point which is pay per views so suppose just two images are getting uploaded per day in our system so we just need to pay for two lambda invocations and not for keeping up the server 24 7 up third point is managing servers definitely managing servers is a headache in the serverless case our code server is managed by aws fourth point is our system with servers was not scalable we always need to keep adding servers and s3 as you can see just not s3 but the entire aws is crazy scalable the last point is we can have downtime in servers and we don't need to have any downtime in aws as i think it never goes down so that's it for this video if you have any suggestions for similar designs using servers versus serverless do post them in comments see you in the next one